On the basis of electrical conductivity, solids can be divided into three classes conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Band theory is a concept based on molecular or orbital theory. Let us take the case of a metal because all the metals are known to be excellent electrical conductors. Here, the orbital of metal atom containing a valence electron combines with another such orbital of a second metal atom to form two molecular orbitals. We know that orbitals are actually waves and they combine in two ways. They can combine constructively and result in a bonding molecular orbital which has a higher amplitude which means greater electron density or they can combine destructively and result in anti-bonding molecular orbital which has zero electron density region called node. Now these molecular orbitals are polycentric and does not belong to any single metal ion but belongs equally to the two interacting metal ions. The electrons in the molecular orbitals are said to have become delocalized. Now, in a metal, there are innumerable metal ions orderly packed. All the valence electron orbitals combine to form plenty of molecular orbitals. The electrons in these molecular orbitals gets delocalized and doesn't remain attached to any particular metal ion. Now look at the energy diagram of the sodium metal which has valence electron 3s. We can see that as more and more 3s orbitals combine, more and more molecular orbitals are formed. And the energy gap between molecular orbitals becomes smaller. When too many 3s orbitals form too many molecular orbitals, the energy gap between the molecular orbitals becomes so much less that they appear as a band. This band is called valence band, which is half filled. Electrons cannot move about in this densely populated area, but it has too many empty orbitals within the same band having comparable energy level. The valence electrons can therefore easily move to those levels and can move freely while conducting electricity. In the case of magnesium, which has valence electron 3s2, the valence band is fully filled with electrons. Here, the empty 3p orbitals also combine with each other to form another 3p band which has no electron theoretically and is called the conduction band. The conduction band which is generally empty lies over the valence band in the energy diagram. In case of magnesium, the conduction band and the valence band overlaps such that it looks as if it is a long enough single band. Electrons can now easily move to the levels having empty orbitals and can move freely while conducting electricity. In insulators, there is a large energy gap between the valence band and conduction band. This gap is called forbidden zone because quantum theory does not permit any orbital at that energy. For insulators, it is very difficult for electrons to jump to the conduction band due to this large energy gap. In semiconductors, this energy gap is quite narrow and electrons could easily jump to the conduction band at elevated temperatures. Group 14 elements like silicon and germanium are semiconductors. They are called intrinsic semiconductors in their PO form. If an element from group 13 or group 15 be added to intrinsic semiconductors in the form of impurity, then they are called extrinsic semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductors are better electrical conductors than intrinsic semiconductors. While adding an impurity, we should keep in mind that the atomic size of that impurity should be comparable with that of the group 14 element, such that it fits properly in the crystal. The process of adding impurity is called doping. N-type semiconductors. When it is doped with a group 15 element like phosphorus or arsenic, the excess non-bonded electrons become delocalized and are free to move. Current is due to movement of these electrons or negative charges. So they are called n-type semiconductors. Here let's see the band diagram. The excess electrons of the doping atom 
take up a place just below the conduction band and is called donor level. So electrons from this donor level doesn't have to cross the forbidden gap to get into the conduction band. That's why they are very good conductors. P-type semiconductors. When it is doped with group 13 element like boron, aluminium or gallium, some electron deficient holes are created in the bonding system. These holes can be filled up by nearby electrons of the adjacent atoms, causing the position of the hole to shift. Here the current is said to flow by the movement of holes or positive holes as they say. So they are called P-type semiconductors. Now let's see the band diagram. The vacant orbital of the doping atom make up a separate band called the acceptor level. Electrons from the valence band can easily go to this acceptor level without having to cross the forbidden gap. That's why they are also very good conductors.